Welcome back. In this episode we are going to learn how to make use of modular and adaptive UI elements by the technique of nine slicing so that we can go from this image over here getting stretched as our image is getting stretched to being consistent in size when it comes to things like the frame and uh, elements along the borders. So let's check it out. So we have this UI issue and it's going to be like this. We have something that we want to represent in the UI. For example, our item stats or something like that. You can see that between this blue uh, square and the green square, they look fairly similar. They have different information and as such, they will look a little bit different in size. Now, you don't want to create a UI element for every single size that you have to display something. Um, because that would just be a whole lot of work. So you want to somehow have a modular approach to how you can display your information. So what problem do we have when we have something like this? Well, to demonstrate this, we can take uh, this box here. This is going to be our simple demonstration. So this box here, if I were to take it and I were to scale it now, for example, I would scale it like extremely to the horizontal, so it's very wide. We can see that the edges here along their frame get wider as the, the UI object itself gets wider. And if we were to do the same on the horizontal, so we bring it back and then we do, sorry, a vertical, we can see that our top and our bottom are getting stretched along with everything else, of course. So uh, this issue is more, uh, apparent the more you have a vertical or horizontal stretching. So that is essentially the, the whole base problem, how you can have UI elements that look good despite uh, resizing them in different situations. So what is the solution to this? Well, you have already known this because it's in the thumbnail, of course. Uh, the solution we're going to be presenting to this is something called nine slice. So a little bit short about what is nine slice. So nine slice is essentially a technique where you have a UI element like this and you slice it up in nine different pieces. So you get a three by three grid. So for example, we could have, that's not a very nice, uh, let's see if we can get a better size, something like that. So we slice something up like, actually let's do, let's do a line, so straight, something like this. So we slice it up with four different lines. And by this, we get a three by three grid instead of our UI element. Now, the point of this is to have certain elements stationary while other parts can be stretched. Uh, how does this help? Well, if we take, for example, our image here again, and let's say that we stretch it vertically a lot like this. If we instead would have had, let's actually do this so I can display here. So if we instead had had our uh, original UI element split in such a way that uh, our one slice would be up here, our top slice, that means that this bar would not be stretched like this one would have been because, let's demonstrate this, if we were to have something like this. Now we're just considering the, the three horizontal, sorry, three vertical slices. So we keep this part stationary, this part stationary, and this part is the one that stretches. So in this case, uh, the bottom here would not be stretched like this, it would look like this, and the top bar here of the frame would not be stretched, it would be looking like this. Um, now, this also applies for the horizontal. So if we were to have our bar over here, maybe not so, maybe like something a little bit further to the right. And we were to take this image here. Of course, now I need to take another one to show how that would look. We can see that the side uh, parts are getting stretched, but we don't want to have it. They want to be uniform regardless of the size of the UI element. Um, so by squaring it off like this with our nine slice, this part would be the same size regardless of what size we had horizontal. And this size would be the same size regardless of horizontal. And this part over here would be stretched, in this case, 
horizontally along with this one. So this is the part that's dynamic when it comes to the horizontal and vertical. This part here is the one that's uh, dynamic when it comes to stretching horizontal, it won't be affected vertical because we have it as part of this bottom slice. And the top part here is the one that would be uh, stationary for verticality, but horizontally it would be stretched. The ones on the sides, as opposed to that, would be uh, dynamically stretched when we did a vertical change, like over here, but we wouldn't be noticing it because the width is the same. But when we uh, expand something sideways, horizontal, they would remain the same and they would look nice. So to demonstrate this uh, in Unreal Engine, how to achieve this and also what it would look like, we have a image imported. It's simply this image. I just removed the text to have it not as distracting. And uh, we will be getting some artifacting because this is not normally how the UI element works. We're just going to be having something very, very simple to demonstrate this. Now, to demonstrate this, we will be creating a user widget. This will represent something like our user interface. Uh, so we'll call this Stein Slice. Inside of here, we'll create a canvas panel simply for the purpose of being able to freely move things around to demonstrate. And we'll take something like an image widget and we'll put it in here and we'll take something like a border widget. So there are a bunch of different widgets that have the ability to actually add images to them as the content. So in this case, we have our nine slides. We can go to our brush here. We can say, put the the image brush to be that image. And for the border, we can do the same thing by going to brush image and over here. So we both have them here, but they're overlapping. So let's move one of them to the side like so. So now we can see that this is what they look like. They don't look very nice. They are just gotten a default uh, size of 100 by 30. Uh, to have a good reference, we can open up this image and we can see that this is a 322 by 373. Uh, so let's make one of these 322 by 373, I think it was. Yep. Okay. So this here is the intended size for this image. And let's move this one to the side. So this is what it looks like without the artifacting. It's the intended sort of uh, visual appearance. Now, if I were to do something similar to this one, we can see that when I stretch this on the vertical, we can see that the arrows over here, everything in this bar here, everything gets stretched vertically, just like I did when I showed it in paint. And equally, if I were to bring it back to the normal size uh, vertically and then stretch it horizontally, we can see that our edges here get stretched uh, just like it did in paint. So how do you in Unreal Engine make use of nine slicing? Well, it's very simple, actually. Uh, if this is supposed to be our original uh, baseline comparison, we can take this one and we go to our image over here and we say that instead of drawing as an image, we can draw it as a box and nothing will appear to happen. happen. And that's because uh, the, the different uh, lines that def determine the slices are actually along the edges of the image by default. Uh, these are the ones that are determined by the margins here. You can see zero for the different uh, values here. And how this is represented is these values go uh, from one to zero or zero to one. And you can see that we have four. So just like here, we see we have a top line, we have a right line, we have a bottom line, and we have a left line. And that's what these numbers represent. So the values are, if we take something like this, uh, if we say this top line here, let's say I have a value of 0 0.1. This is sort of what this represents. So it's 0 0.1 from the top edge down to where it actually is. If the line instead were to be somewhere here in the middle, then the value for that line would be something along the lines of 0 0.5, if it was to be something further down, like down here, then it would be 0 0.7, down here it would be one. So the rate of these values is from top zero and one in the bottom. Uh, so you want to have your lines sort of 
probably a little bit from the edges, so you cut off all the parts that you don't want to be stretched. Uh, so in this case, if we were to get something like, let's say we try values of 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2. Now we have gotten some values here, and we don't really see much of a difference right now. But if we were to stretch uh, horizontally, we can see that it, it seems to be looking different. We can see, among other things, we can see that the side frame over here now is not being affected. It is staying constant regardless of of the size that I'm uh, translating this or scaling it. So that's nice, it looks uniform. We can see that I have happened to cut uh, my line uh, by the inside of these arrows. So they are actually also staying consistent in size regardless of how much I stretch, unlike when if I were to do this one, you can see that the lines or the arrows are getting very stretched. So. What you need to do is essentially find places in your image where you can eliminate all the parts that you don't want to have stretched by setting the margins to proper values for that. If we were to scale upwards and downwards here, you can see that we're still getting things like uh, the equipped uh, here is, is getting stretched sideways because that's part of the, the sideways, the lines here for the borders for the slice. And that's why it will be stretching, but it won't be stretching when we're doing vertical. Uh, this is a little bit of a misrepresentation for this specific uh, element because you would most likely only have the border that you would be doing this sort of uh, nine slicing with. Things like the arrows, the equipped and bars like that afterwards and this little icon here on top would be things that you would have in the end. Because in this case, for example, you can see here that this is what the square is supposed to be looking like. And as I expand here, this one is getting affected as well. That's because that shouldn't really be part of the nine splicing method. That's a separate element inside of um, the UI element that will would be our widget in the end. So you need to consider that it's most likely only going to be sort of things like frames, um, edges, borders, uh, that sort of thing, because you want things like these edge corners here. Those you don't want to have stretched when you scale because that looks really bad. Uh, and you want to have the frames consistent as well. So yeah, that's essentially how you do it in our lending. It's very simple. You use the draw as box instead. You set your margins to represent your different values to where you want your different lines to be so that they secure the different parts of the image so that when you scale it, they don't move, but other parts move. And something to keep in note uh, of as well here is that this allows for stretching, uh, let's say this middle part here. Uh, this middle part that was the center square and the, the bottom and the top here, these are the ones that are dynamically scaling uh, when we do horizontal changes, which means they can actually go below the intended size as well. So now you can see that there's actually squashing here and everything for the sides is gonna be consistent until we reach a point where the margins together will be the only size that remains at that part which happens approximately here, I think, we can see that it's actually start to uh, affect the scaling for, for those as well. So now you can see. So there is a minimum amount you can stretch something or scale something, which is going to be your combined border. So if you do horizontal, it will be your left and right. If you're doing uh, vertical, it will be your top and bottom. That will be staying consistent until the margins together is what you have remaining as your scaling size, essentially. Then they will start to squash as well. So yeah, that's uh, how line slicing works in Unreal Engine. I hope this was useful. Keep on learning. Take care. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.